Hi everyone, in this video we are going to talk about circuit breaker. In electrical domain, circuit breaker is actually a device uh, that protects your device from any unexpected flow of electricity. Uh, so circuit breaker usually controls the flow of electricity into the device. Uh, by doing that, it actually protects your device from any damage. Uh, but in this video particularly, we are going to talk about the principle of circuit breaker, uh, how to apply the principle of circuit breaker in microservices architecture. In microservices architecture, or typically in any distributed system where you have multiple devices connected to each other through network, uh, we usually face a common issue uh, called cascading failures. So cascading failures are uh, nothing but actually, in case if a failure happens in one part of your system, uh, that failure spreads to other part of the system and sometimes it has the potential to bring down the whole system. So that's what we usually call cascading failures. And uh, let, let me try to explain the concept of cascading failures with a simple example. Assume we are building an e-commerce application. So we have several services. Consider we have an order service, uh, we have an inventory service and a payment service. Now let's assume a simple uh, uh, sample use case which is in, in which the customer is actually placing an order in your application. So the order service actually receives the request and then it will talk to the inventory service to check whether the product is available or not. So once the product is available, then the inventory service will talk to the payment service to check whether the customer has enough credit to purchase the product. Um, so in this case, if you notice, for to achieve that single transaction, right, these three services has to talk to each other to complete the transaction. Now assume in case if there is some uh, issue that happens in the payment service, if there is something wrong in the payment service, uh, consider if the payment service itself has some issues or if the virtual machine uh, that is hosting the payment service has some problem, uh, sometimes the payment service may not have enough capacity to handle more requests. So some kind of an issue in the payment service. Now the inventory service will send the request to the payment service, but the payment service cannot handle uh, all those requests as fast as it usually does, right? Uh, because there is something wrong with the payment service. And assume there are a lot of users um, who are actually trying to place an order in your application, so there are a lot of requests coming to the system. Now the inventory service will try to send all those requests to the payment service. Uh, but the payment service cannot respond all, to all those requests. So what will happen, at the inventory service side, uh, all the requests will get into the waiting queue. The service will start to wait for all those uh, responses and then it start to time out slowly. So when the inventory service spent more time in waiting for the response from the payment service, obviously uh, the resource consumption in the inventory service will go up. So most of the CPU will be consumed by the inventory service. And when the CPU usage is high in the inventory service, the service will start to perform poor. The inventory service will also start to perform poor because there is no enough CPU to handle more requests, right? Now, now the order service have to send the request to the inventory service and it will also face the same issue because now the inventory service is starting to perform poor. The inventory service cannot handle the request as fast as it usually does. Now consider if the order service is sending too many requests to the inventory service and then the order service will also uh, wait for a long time for the response from the inventory service and then it will also start to time out. And the same issue will happen in the order service, the CPU usage of the order service will also go high. And this doesn't stop with the order service, in case if there are other services that relies on the order service and the inventory service they will also face the same issue because these services cannot respond to those requests uh, quickly. So all those services will also start to wait wait long for the response and the CPU usage of those services will also go high. Now this is what I was talking about. This is the cascading failures I was talking about. So the failure or the issue actually happens in one part of the system and then it slowly propagates to the other part of the system. And sometimes it has the potential to bring the whole system down. So this is where a circuit breaker comes into picture. So we can actually avoid these kind of issues using the principle of circuit breaker. Uh, now, now let's rerun the same scenario, considering we have implemented the circuit breaker across the system, okay? Now, uh, we got a failure in payment service. Uh, the payment service facing a failure, so it is not able to, uh, not able to respond to the request as fast as uh, it usually does. Now, the inventory service start to receive failure responses from the payment service. It, it start to receive the timeout issues or some other kind of an internal server issues. 
from the payment service. So at some point of time, the inventory service will identify that there is something wrong in the payment service. So it will stop sending the traffic to the payment service. So that's what we call as the circuit is open. So this is the open state of the circuit, which means the inventory service will stop sending requests to the payment service anymore. It actually opens the circuit and no request will pass to the payment service. Now, after some time, the payment service be, might become available, right? It, someone might be uh, fixing the issue in the payment service, someone might redeploy the payment service, or the ser server might have enough capacity to handle the request. So for some reasons, the payment service might become healthy. So to identify that, the inventory service, after some time, it will send a very limited subset of requests to the payment service. This is to just to check uh, whether the payment service is healthy or not. So this state is what we call as half open. So for some period of time, the inventory service sent a very limited request to the payment service just to verify whether the payment service is available or not. And this state is what we call as half open. Now in case, in the half open state, if the payment service returns some successful response, then the inventory service would assume that the payment service is now healthy and then it will continue to send the request to the payment service. And that state is what we call as closed. And this is the default state of the circuit breaker uh, where all the traffic are allowed to go to the upstream service. Now in case, during the half open state, if the payment service is returning some failure responses, which means the payment service issue is not resolved, then the inventory service will again open the circuit. It will again open the circuit and it will not send any request to the payment service, which means it moves back to the open state. So this is how we actually avoid the cascading failures. If the service identified that the upstream service is not performing good or if it is not available, then it shouldn't simply send the request continuously to the upstream service. That will cause the whole system to be in the danger situation. So now circuit breaker is actually a finite state machine. Uh, which contains the finite number of states like which has open, half open and closed state. And the system uh, will transfer from one state to another based on the behavior of your upstream services. Now people would uh, uh, wonder how do we implement this kind of logic in our application, right? Uh, do we have to implement the circuit breaking mechanism in the application code itself? Uh, actually you don't have to because there are a lot of libraries available uh, which actually implemented the circuit breaker mechanism. So you can just make use of those libraries in your microservices and they will take care of the uh, circuit breaking behavior. Uh, like some of the common libraries for circuit breakers are, uh, there is a histories library, uh, which is uh, implemented by Netflix in house and they released it as an open source product. So we can use that. And there is another library called Consul, a product from Hashica. Uh, it's a service mesh library and we can use that also. Uh, that also implemented the circuit breaking functionality. And there is a Java framework called as Resilience4j, which also has a circuit breaking functionality. So there are a lot of libraries available uh, which actually implement this uh, circuit breaking functionality. So in this video, we talked about uh, what is circuit breaker, what is cascading failures, and how do we solve that problem with the circuit breaking principle. Uh, I hope this video is really useful to you. Thanks a lot for watching. Audio